Hello everyone, my name is Flavio Pereira, I'm part of the technical enablement team uh, and this is the second portion of the high availability and disaster recover lesson. Uh, on the first portion we covered the high availability and now we're going to talk about disaster recover and go some of the options inside of OCI that you can design your plan or architecture to have a disaster recover um, scenario uh, or disaster recover plan better say in place. So let's start with the disaster recover term terminology. So for those who are not familiar with disaster recover, so usually you have to build up a plan uh, to keep your business or environment up and running in case a disaster happen. So it, the disaster can be uh, some fire that's happening inside of the data center or uh, some natural uh, disaster that might happen like a hurricane or something like that um, on your location and then uh, you want to get ready to move your resources from your this place where the disaster happened to another one so you're not going to do a physical movement because everything might get destroyed but you have to have a plan that you can have your business um, continuity and up and running uh, that all the users using your platform can access the systems if that um, if that disaster happens. So you have to plan where you want to place this workload. What's the other regions you want to use to other uh, to create the, uh, your disaster recovery plan, right? So basically, disaster recovery is going to be measured in what we call RPO and RTO. It depends on how your your business. Uh, uh, key metric is required, depending on the metrics that, that require for that, uh, you're going to be measured along the RPO and the RTO, okay? Um, and of course, many of the, the companies that create a disaster recovery plan, they usually do that uh, in outside of their own location, by all, their own geographical location. So if they have a data center, uh, let's say, uh, in Texas, and then uh, if they, they want to plan a disaster recovery, they might want to place the data center in another state uh, outside of Texas or even outside of their own city. So it depends on the uh, on the budget and the location uh, as well. So you, you, you want to create um, a disaster recovery plan. So here's some of the key metrics that I mentioned, the RTO and the RPO. So let's just um, um, work on and understand what it what that is. So if you have a disaster, you have two um, key metrics, the RPO and the RTO. So let's say if a disaster happens and you're, you, you're actually committing some transactions inside of your, your database or inside of your application. So the RPO is the time that you can afford that amount of transactions that got lost. So for example, when it, the, the disaster happens, you say, I can afford just you know, 50 minutes of transactions that got lost um, on my um, workload or my, inside of my database, right? When we're committing something over there. The other side is the RTO, is the downtime. So how much time you can afford to be down. Um, so when a disaster happens, you might want to say, I just can just afford to be down for 24 hours or, um, you know, three hours or 15 minutes, right? So as you can imagine, uh, as uh, you start um, looking for your business, you have to understand the, your, your workload, of course, and understanding what's the key metrics for you in case a disaster happens. So if the RTO is important, the RPO is important, which one is more important than the other, or they're both important, right? This is one thing you have to look for. So and just to give an idea, uh, as you actually uh, move the time close to the disaster, uh, what I mean by that is if disaster happens, you, you, the transactions you, you lost, you have say, I can lost maybe two minutes of my transactions or 10 minutes of uh, downtime, right? So as you get closer time to the disaster when that happens and you have to have your business up and running there, more cost, um, uh, the plan and the disaster recovery will, will cost to you because you have to keep uh, the environments up and running all the time. So as, here's an, a scenario that if you want to just plan a backup and restore, for example, you have all the, the backup um, of your um, environment in a different location, a different site, and if something happens, you're okay waiting 24 hours to uh, bring your environment back on again 
and your company is comfortable, say, I, I don't need to worry about the last um, day of transactions. Uh, everything that went through the last day, it's okay. I can I can redo it or ask you know to people to commit that again. So then you were fine with that. So you can leave with the bank app restore. Maybe standby, right? So standby is more a replication uh, type of thing that, that the other side of the disaster recover uh, site is not going to have resources up and running all the time. Right, so you, you you might say if there is something wrong with my uh, environment, um, I can lose the you know the 12 hours uh, of transactions, but I have to be up and running in four hours. So that gives you ability. You don't have to redeploy everything. You can just turn up turn on machines uh, that was in standby and then have your environment up and running. Or you can have an active active, which means you have to have real time replication of the data from your current location to um, to the disaster recovery site. Right? So you can afford to you know lose two hours of transactions, but you have to be up and running in 15 minutes uh, at the time of the disaster happened. So it gonna cost you more because you have to put more resources in place. You have to keep the data synchronized. Uh, this is actually um, a good overview of of a plan. So if you plan to do a disaster recovery, those are the things you have to keep in mind. So let's talk about disaster recovery for OCI. Then um, the thing is, OCI give you that um, extra site uh, without any cost. So when you're creating a disaster recover um, um, using cloud environment, especially in OCI, uh, you have access to multiple regions. So right there, you can start thinking and, and create a disaster recovery plan, even without asking for uh, location of data centers, you know, finding a location, uh, buying resources uh, in order to put everything on that specific disaster recovery site. So you have access to multiple regions. You can deploy resources in multiple regions, and then that way, create your disaster recover uh, plan as well. You can also take advantage of the, the cloud just to have your disaster recover site. You, can, you might have everything running uh, up and running on-prem, on-premises uh, as a production environment, and then have your disaster recover site in, in OCI, okay? So multiple regions give you that flexibility, uh, and we give you all the infrastructure needed for you to create a disaster recover plan. So if you're using multiple regions, uh, the connectivity that goes through what we call um, remote uh, peering. So you can do a remote peering between regions and connect the network layer uh, between those two regions. We're gonna use, you're gonna use an internal backbone that Oracle offers to you. So the traffic will be all internal. It's gonna never gonna leave Oracle network. So you can have one region connected to another. It's simple as spinning up a DRG um, that you might saw um, information on all on the other lessons and then you connect those those two drgs and put your routes in place and then you have two regions connected right there and you can start having um, scenarios deploying putting your resources in a different regions and make sure that they can talk to each other uh, so in terms of storage or replication because it's a really important portion of um, of it so you you can co copy data from one region to another one based on the on the on the backups of your block storage so if you every time you take a backup of a block storage um, you can send that backup over to another region and then uh, from there you can restore and put that over uh, uh, connect that to a to a, a vm or or a bare metal server so then your services will, will come up uh, just fine on the second region so if you plan that um uh, really well you can have synchronization of the data right so every time you take a backup if you're taking backup every um every four hours or even a day or a night you can actually send that backup over you can schedule to send that backup over to um, to another region and then uh, have your your machines in standby and then you can bring up those machines just hook up those uh, block volumes to that and then you have your environment up and running again Another feature that's available in OCI that can take advantage to, to redirect traffic is what we call DNS traffic uh, management uh, steering policies. So with that, 
you can have uh, all the DNS traffic moving direction um, of, after a disaster from one region to another one, or from you know different load balancers to from one region to another one. So that way, all the requests that your users are, um, are going through, they will be transparent. And the, the, what's going to happen is once the user do a request to your website or your application, the DNS will automatically redirect to the second region where your application is up and running. So DNS traffic steering give you a few scenarios. So you can do basic failover, you can do cloud migration, uh, you can do load balancer across multiple servers, you can use hybrid environments, right? You can have a, a DNS traffic steering policy sending traffic to your on-premises environment too. So that services is really powerful in order to achieve that kind of uh, disaster recovery plan. Because this is how you can, you're going to make sure that in case of an event, all the traffic will be direct, redirect from one location to another one. So just to give an idea, this is in a failover uh, scenario. You have a user trying to access, uh, accessing the primary um, uh, environment, can be on-premises, it could be um, on, on a different, um, specific region. And then at the moment that a problem happens, uh, the DNS will automatically redirect traffic to the redundant uh, site. So that way everything is redirected. Users, for the users, he really doesn't, he doesn't know what happened. He doesn't know that the primary site uh, went away uh, and all the traffic will be directed to the second one. So here's some of the architectures uh, that uh, you might want to use as a starting point um, to start creating or your disaster recovery plan. You have a backup and restore architecture. Uh, you can have your your uh, resources placed on premises, um, and you might have a storage gateway that you you saw it on the data migration uh, lesson uh, inside of your on premises environment. Just copying data from NFS uh, to the storage gateway and then sending that over to object storage. So that way, all the data is already synchronized, um, you know, in a way to the object storage in the cloud. And then if there's something wrong, you might have, uh, you can just restore uh, the data from those uh, object storage to an uh, uh, environment inside of the cloud or even inside of your on-premises. Maybe you have a different site on-premises, you just wanted to offload the backup, backup off, off, uh, out of the on-premises environment, so you can just restore uh, from that. Uh, the standby architecture, right? Uh, you have all the services in place uh, in the region and just waiting, maybe on the down state, you don't have to keep that up and running all the time. Uh, then you have a DNS traffic steering that can redirect traffic in, in case something went wrong from your on premises environment to, um, to OCI. Uh, you might have a VPN connectivity um, between those two environments. Uh, so the data will be, be transferred over uh, the VPN connection. Uh, through that, so you're not actually sync all the, a lot of data, but you know maybe the 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 differentiate of the data is going through the storage gateway. You're probably gonna do a first bookload of data using like data transfer appliance or data transfer disk. Uh, and then if there's something wrong, it can easily switch the uh, the traffic from on-premises to the region uh, in OCI. Or you might want to go to an active active architecture which um, you're going to have both environments up and running at the same time uh, and having data synchronized from one place to another one. Uh, most customers are going to use a fast connect for it uh, where they can connect their own on premises to OCI on a private line um, that can go over to oh, up to 10 gigabits per second. So that make the transaction uh, of the data uh, really fast uh, on a regular basis. So you have everything in place, you have load balancers, all the web servers, all the database, everything is placed uh, on the region inside of OCI as well, up and running, just synchronizing data from your on-premises to there. And there's, if there's a problem on your on-premises, DNS traffic manager will switch traffic over and everything is gonna be up and running, right? Uh, that RTO and RPO will be really short in this case. Okay, for in terms of database, database for um, these, uh, strategies for database in DR, um, of course, if using Oracle database, um, always look for Active Data Guard. How you can uh, set up Active Data Guard? There's lessons um, on the database level that walk you through some of the options for Active Data Guard. Golden Gate's another option to keep the data replicated all the time. So injecting data in one place and that data will uh, be replicated to another region or another 
another location and keep all that synchronized. Another thing that's really important for all the scenarios, not only for disaster recover, um, but for uh, AJ as well, is using the monitoring services uh, too. So this is really important. That's gonna how that's how is gonna actually measure all your environment in case there's some something wrong. They can send you notifications uh, about all the services uh, up and running on OCI. All right. So there was the uh, disaster recover uh, portion of the presentation.